Hi, this is Jim from Realtruth.net. This is Lesson 5, and this lesson is about the Ten Commandments. In Lesson 4, we talked about the obedience that is required after you've received the redemption. And in that lesson, uh, the scriptures all call for keeping the commandments of Yahweh. And today, uh, in this lesson, we're going to talk about the commandments that it was referring to when it said, keep the commandments of Yahweh. And those <clears throat> commandments are the Ten Commandments that everyone is fighting so hard to get out of our buildings to not want to see not want to be around yet others are fighting so hard to put them up <clears throat> to show them they want we live by the Ten Commandments well in reality no one lives uh, most of them are not living by the Ten Commandments and we will demonstrate that here as we go through the Ten Commandments in this video. Now, we will start with Deuteronomy 5.22 and Deuteronomy 5.22 these words Yahweh spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire of the cloud and the thick darkness and with a great voice and he added no more added no more and we need to understand that very, very, very clearly. I mean, these, this is what the scripture said. He spoke these and he added no more. And he wrote them on two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. Two tables of stone. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about the tables of stone here. And the one thing about writing them on tables of stone is they don't ever go away. They're etched in. It's there virtually forever. And, and not only that, he took the two tables of stone and he had a ark built and put them inside the ark and protected it from the elements and it was guarded and anybody that touched the ark would die and so these stones this law that he gave from this mountain is a very 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 important thing for mankind and you Yeshua said in Matthew 5:18, he said verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass in other words we're still here it has not passed. We got at least another thousand or more years. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. In other words, this law was put down. <clears throat> it isn't changing. And this law uh, also is referring to the book of the law there's two different laws we have here we have those written by the finger of Yahweh put inside the ark and we have those written by the pen of Moses in the leather and put on the outside of the ark <clears throat> now the thing about the Moses portion of it it wasn't indelible I mean it was going to eventually rot away and go away which it did and has to be recopied but in either case <clears throat> there's not one jot or one tittle that's going to pass from that law till all is fulfilled it is there now 
the administration of them of the Moses may have may change, but that doesn't change the fact that all of it is still there. So <clears throat> we come down here to Exodus 20, and we'll start there. And Elohim, the all supreme Elohim, and I add these words, I've changed this because if you look it up in the Hebrew, this is what it's saying, translated into our English, but this is what it says. And he spoke all these words saying, and I will have all of these correct translations here into the literal uh, for you. The first command was Exodus 20, verse 2, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt. And as we spoke in the last one, out of what? Sin. For us today, the allegory is sin. So these commandments apply directly to us today because the allegory of Egypt is sin. And out of the house of bondage, which is the bondage of our sin. Again, these apply to us because that is an allegory. This house of bondage was our house of bondage in our body, our sin, that we could not, it ruled us. <clears throat> so in Exodus 20, verse 3, Ye, you shall have no other gods or Elohim before me. There's your command. In Mark 12, 29, And Yeshua answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Adonai, the Master, the One. Adonai is a different uh, Hebrew word than Elohim. It's, it kind of means Lord, but it means the Supreme One. Your in authority, your Elohim, Yahweh, is one Adonai. He is the one and supreme. He is it. And that comes right back here. You shall have no other gods or Elohim before me. That's where this comes from. The Adonai, our Elohim, Yahweh, is one Adonai. And you shall love the Adonai, your Elohim, Yahweh, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And this is the first commandment. So, You see the first commandment uh, spoken of in the New Testament here. In Deuteronomy 6.4 is where he also repeated this from, right? Yahweh, your Elohim, is one Yahweh. In Deuteronomy 6, 5, And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Now, well, I want to keep adding words here, but I'm not. The scripture is very p clear and plain. We know what this first commandment is. And we know that it is still binding upon us today. In Isaiah 44, 24, it says, This says Yahweh, your Redeemer, He that formed you from the womb, I am Yahweh that make it, makes all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, that stretches abroad the earth by myself. He is one. He is the... Uh, the Elohim of the universe. In Ephesians 4.4, 4, again, there is one body, 
in one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Now this in English says one Lord, but this word Lord here is Adonai. In this particular, the master, the, the top, one, and that is Yahweh, and one faith, and one baptism. <clears throat> and, and in verse 6, one Elohim, Yahweh, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. You know, I need to show this because this this is where everything how can people go awry here all you got to do is look at the word and you will see that that's exactly what this is talking about there is one in authority and that is Yahweh and <clears throat> there is one creator one Elohim supreme and that is Yahweh and he is the father of all so that's actually how it reads and then because most want to come back and say well this is Yeshua well I okay I'm not gonna post a big argument about that in verse 5 here but <clears throat> verse Seven kind of shows you that this is really talking about Yahweh. Because in verse 7 it says, But to every one of us is given grace from who? Where is this grace coming from? This unmerited favor. It's coming from Yahweh, right? Okay. It's given unmerited favor according to the measure of the gift Where's the gift coming from? Yahweh, the Father of the Messiah. See, this is the verse that brings in the Messiah into the mix. And so there is no trinity. There is no modalism. It's very, very easy to understand that Yahweh is the Creator, is the Almighty, sitting on the throne. And then, <clears throat> as we sh always show, that Yeshua the Messiah is sitting at his right hand. So there we have confirmed the first commandment is in force and is speaking of Yahweh and Yahweh is the father of all who is above all and through you all and in you all. And we'll come back in the next one of the next videos where when Yeshua gives it all back it is so that Yahweh can be all in all. But look this stuff up for yourselves and, and understand it. I'm just giving you a cursor so you know what to look for. Okay, the second command. You shall not make unto you any graven image of any likeness of any kind that is in the heaven above or earth beneath and there's the waters under the earth. That's the first part. First of all, don't make the images. And there's a reason for that, because he's a jealous Elohim. And the creation is his. <clears throat> You're not allowed to recreate it. And we'll show you... Um, We'll see that a little further down here. But that's the first part. Then the second part makes it even more grievous because it says in verse 5, You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. And by serving them, if you make a graven image and set it out on your lawn, you make the statues of the saints and you make the gargoyles on the buildings and you do all this stuff, what do you do to them? You clean them, you take care of them, you serve them. And unfortunately, many people bow down to them. They do worship them. But... <clears throat> Uh, even if you don't necessarily bow down to them, they're still in your heart because if you lost it, you'd be sad. And that's not giving Yahweh uh, pleasure. And he says, 
Okay, going on in verse 5. For I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. <clears throat> so, you know, in that, you know, he doesn't visit the sins of the father. He doesn't set them on the children. But the deeds of the fathers will uh, transfer the children because the children are raised that way. And that and it just continues to propagate. And you see that throughout all society. Abusers become abusers. And, and once in a while someone will break free. But <clears throat> that this, this is... Definitely, he visits the iniquities of the father and the children of the third and fourth generations. Okay, second command yet. 1 John 5.21 Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Confirmation, the command is still there. And in 2 Corinthians 6.15 And what accord has the Messiah with Baal? Or what part has he with that believeth with an infidel? In verse 16, then, what agreement has the temple of Yahweh with idols? If you are the temple of the living Elohim, as Yahweh hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. So <clears throat> he's instructing us here again, don't deal with idols, don't deal with graven images, don't deal with those things, get away from them. And he says in verse 17, therefore come out from among them and be ye separate says the Adonai, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says Yahweh the Almighty. <clears throat> we can't get much clearer that the second commandment is definitely still in force upon us today. Then in Acts 15.20 But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. And we'll get back to why we have to abstain from blood. That's, a, that's not even in the Ten Commandments but it is a commandment of Yahweh and, uh, and you'll lose your soul if you eat the blood. And we, we'll prove that in a later video. Then in Acts 7.40, <clears throat> starting in 7.40, this is a kind of a, <clears throat> it's a, a quote, and but people do it today, and we'll <clears throat> I'll show you why this is quoted here. Because they were saying, and saying unto Aaron, and you can go back and read the other part of it, but make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become from him. This is when Moses and them was in the mountain getting the tables of stone. The children already turned from Yah, <clears throat> and they asked Aaron to make them that golden calf. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifices unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their hands. Then Yahweh turned and gave them up to worship the hosts of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O house of Israel, have you offered to me slain the beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yes, <clears throat> you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remthav, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away into Babylon. And we... Uh, not me, but we, the church today, 
has done exactly the same thing. They're worshiping their idols. Their tabernacles of Moloch. <clears throat> now, they say they are Christianity, but they are worshiping the star of their god, Ramoth. They are sun worshipers. They worship the first day of the week. They worship the Sunday. They worship uh, the the uh, solace, the Christmas days. They worship the Estar, the Easter's. They do all of this stuff. This is exactly what the Christian church is doing in um, respect. It's the likeness of what they did there. And uh, <clears throat> it can't be done, folks. It cannot be done. Uh, because you'll be carried away into Babylon. You already are. You'll be thrown into the lake of fire for doing these things. This is the way it is. I mean, it's not me that says this. This is the word of Yahweh. So we've established <clears throat> that the second commandment is absolutely in force for us today. It has not gone away. It is there. And then <clears throat> at the end of that commandment, it says, here's the glorious thing in Exodus 20, verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. <clears throat> The iniquities are visited upon the children of those that hate him. But notice this. I, I always marvel at this. <clears throat> because he's showing mercy unto, what is this? Thousands of them that love me. Thousands is not very many. You know, when you, you should have said many are called, few are chosen. There's your evidence of that right there. <clears throat> few. Few are chosen, only thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The third commandment, you shall not take the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, in vain. For Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. In this this is, gets all kinds of discussion, doesn't it? Um, it's hard to even come in. I can't really find anything uh, that talks too much about this. Although there are some that allude to it, but the word vain, every, you know, they go, oh, well, GD, you can't say that. Well, wait a minute. First of all, God is not his name, so you can't, that doesn't mean much. And oh my G D my you know again it's nasty it doesn't sound good but again that's not his name so what are you doing it doesn't matter in reality <clears throat> but the name of Yahweh in vain so if you're walking in the ways of Yahweh you uh, better not be doing things contrary to the commandments and contrary to the scripture. That's one way of taking his name in vain. The other is, is to take his name, which all of Christianity is doing today, <clears throat> and they are trashing it. They are making it empty. They refuse to use it. They make it desolate. They hide it under the term Lord and God and all, and all these, these titles they've changed into names. His name is Yahweh, and he's been gracious enough to give it to us. And we need to uh, honor him and call him by his right name. And uh, <clears throat> maybe in Chinese it'll sound different than Yahweh, but it's still yod heh vav uh, in in the uh, Hebrew, and if they translate that into some other language other than English, because English is not a God-given language, okay? It's not the sacred language. Uh, it might be a little different as long as they're 
transliterating the um, <clears throat> the Hebrew uh, letters, which I've shown here. Uh, this kind of um, messed up here, but I couldn't give it any other way to you. This is from the ancient Hebrew lexicon <clears throat> for the word vain um, to show you how it was written. So we need to be cognizant of this and just keep this third commandment. It's still valid today. The fourth commandment, the big one that everybody wants to forget, the big one that everybody wants to change. Well, we don't have to keep it. It pointed to Yeshua. No, it didn't. Where does it point to Yeshua here? Where does it say anything about the Messiah in this? That's all That's all lies. It's all garbage. It's nothing. And there's a reason why uh, Yahweh said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep keep it holy. He said, Remember... Because he didn't create Sabbath day here. It was created back at the beginning of creation. On the seventh day, he blessed and hallowed it. And so we're supposed to remember it, not forget it. So, uh, Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. And in it you shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your man servant, nor your maid servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger, that is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So that's the commandment. That's what he wrote. That's what he spoke and wrote with his finger. And so man keeps trying to change it. They don't want to do it. You know, the Sabbaths, and, you know, they had the uh, sabbatical year. They had the jubilees. They had the seventh, seven-year Sabbaths where the land was supposed to rest. There was all kinds that Israel was giving, given in addition to this. And they never did any of them. And that was their downfall. <clears throat> the crux of their whole downfall is because they refused to keep the Sabbath. And this started right when they came out of the land of Egypt. What did Yahweh say? He said, hey, six days I'm going to give you manna. And on the sixth day, collect double. On the seventh, it won't be there. And the very next verse, what does it say? And they went out on the seventh day to pick it up. What? What? That's what people do today, right? You, you, you got. Wait a minute. He said this, but we're not going to do it. We're just going to go do what we want to. In Isaiah 58:12, <clears throat> and this gives you a little more insight into this. And you notice here, it doesn't say, uh, "Okay, on the Sabbath, you don't." do it but you can have somebody else do it for you uh-uh nope ain't happening you can't you can't go out to eat and use a credit card and think oh well because it's not cash and and they're gonna work there anyway nope doesn't work folks does not work <clears throat> Isaiah 58 12 and they and this is to us this is to folks like me that will preach the truth and they that shall be of you shall build the old waste places that's what we're doing building it back up you shall raise up the foundations of many generations i wish that would be the case i think we're at the end of this age and right now i'm just praying that people someone will hear this and repent and come to the knowledge of the truth and you shall be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of the past to dwell in. <clears throat> oh, that that would be for me. Um, but I, I'm doing it. I'm putting it out here. In Isaiah 58:13. now. If. You see this big if here? 
if, 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 it's a big if, you turn away from the Sabbath, your foot from doing your pleasures on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight. You've got to call it a delight. You've got to love it in your heart. It's got to be there. The holy of Yahweh, honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, okay, not finding your own pleasure, and not speaking your own words. You're not going to talk about your business transactions. You're not going to watch your sports. <clears throat> You're not going to go out and just do the things that you want to do. This is a day for you and Yahweh to be together. You study the scripture. If if you have the glorious opportunity to gather with other people on the Sabbath, gather with them and rejoice together. <clears throat> but, okay, and then Isaiah 58, 14. Now this is the key. Remember, 13 was if you turn away on the Sabbath, you are for, from doing your own pleasure and call it a lie. If then 14 is the then of this statement. Then shall you delight yourself in Yahweh, and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth to feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. He spoke it. <clears throat> he says it here again, reiterates this fourth commandment. Do it. Do it. You can't turn the first day into the seventh day. You can't justify it by your church doctrine and by your uh, your traditions. It cannot happen. <clears throat> then in Hebrews 4, 1, and this, this particular chapter gets <clears throat> all blown out of portion because they all Anybody that says, Yeshua's arrest is a liar. That's not the truth. He didn't, he didn't fulfill the Sabbath for us. <clears throat> because in Hebrews 4.1, what does it say here? Let us therefore fear. Okay, we should be afraid. Alright, this is not a joke. Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Wait a minute. I thought it was done away. So why is the promise being left to us? So the promise is being toward us. Okay, it's still here for us. All right. If it was done away with, then this this right here would would have no meaning whatsoever. It be it would be a bogus statement, right? A promise being left us of entering into his rest. Now here's the kicker. Any of you should seem to come short of it. What? We need to fear lest we come short of it. Where does it where does that coming short from? Our what are we doing on the Sabbath day? Of course, this would be to someone that has actually accepted the truth of the Sabbath day. If if you are a, a first day worshiper, this means nothing to you because you haven't even gotten to the point where you call the Sabbath a delight yet. For he spake in it, verse 4, for he spake in a certain place <clears throat> of the seventh day on this wise, and Yahweh did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. And verse 6, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. They had unbelief. They did not enter in. And that was their fall. And in Hebrews 4, 9, and there remaineth therefore a Sabbath to the people of Yahweh. Now I put this in here. Uh, this is the Greek uh, that was written here. That is the Greek word. Now, in the English, it was rendered uh, rest. 
in the KJV, it's rest and many others. Now, some of the English versions are starting to correct this. Why would the KJV render this word rest? Every place else the word rest is in here is actually the uh, Greek word for rest. This particular one was sabatos. And, and that's exactly what it means, a Sabbath. And uh, so um, why did they do it? Because they didn't want to keep the Sabbath. They were first day keepers. So that you couldn't keep, you couldn't translate the Sabbath here. You had to pervert it into the word rest. And so uh, verse 9, Hebrews 4, 9 actually re reads, There remaineth therefore a Sabbath to the people of Yahweh. And verse 10, for he that entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as Yahweh did from his. And verse 11, <clears throat> let us labor, let us work, let us strive, let us do everything in our humanly possible efforts Therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of what? Unbelief. The same example of unbelief, and that is what, and that is what is taking place today. It is unbelief is why they do not enter into the Sabbath. Now, I want to, I want to pull this out for the deception that is out there. Yeshua is our Sabbath, right? Yeshua is our Sabbath. He, we rest in Yeshua all the time. Well, and it's a free gift. If it's a free gift, then why are we working? Why are we laboring? Why do we have to put forth effort on our own part to enter into that rest? If Yeshua is our free, willy-nilly, uh, lawless, abiding rest, then why do we have to labor to enter into it? See, it's contrary to that doctrine. It's contrary. And, um, you know, before I get off of this, I'm sorry. I'm, we're going to go here. This is just getting, maybe it's going to make it a little bit too long. But I want to go to Hebrews 4 real quick here and read just read this again now everybody's read this uh, but I'm just going to read it again let us therefore fear lest a promise being less left us of entering into his rest any of you should come short of it for unto us the gospel was preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with what? Faith. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Are we not having faith? Do we not having faith? It says, for we which have believed. See, if we have believed, we do enter into rest. We do it. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. It is an absolute, complete, uh, direct reference to the seventh day Sabbath. Because in verse 4, as we've shown in the uh, handout here, he spoke in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise and Yahweh did rest the seventh day from all his works and I just am showing that here so that you can um, you can understand it <coughs> for if uh, Yeshua had given them rest then would he not afterward have spoken of another day therefore there remaineth a rest to the people of Yahweh or a Sabbath. This is Sabbath. And um, for he that entered into his rest, 
he also has ceased from his works. This is Sabbath. Here, let's let's just show this real quick so you can see this. Uh, rest. There it is. See? Boom. Sabbath. Sabbatimos. So it is there. And this other word, rest, is different. You see, this, this is to lie down, to settle down, to repose. That is exactly what it says. It says, so therefore there remaineth, what, a Sabbath unto the people, for he that entered into his, what, his repose, his Sabbath, his rest, as he did when he created, when he ceased, when he settled down, he quit working his own works, as God did from him. So therefore let us labor, use speed, make effort, be prompt, be earnest to enter in to that rest. And again, this is that repose. So we enter into that rest. We're laying down. This is a physical stopping of doing something here, folks. So Yeshua cannot be our rest. He is not our rest. Yeah, he's a rest for our souls, but not the physical Sabbath rest. So the fourth commandment is binding, is applicable to us today. And the Catholic Church, which changed it to the first day of the week, uh, <clears throat> they even say that um, that it was they they changed it and uh, to prove their authority. And they're saying the Sabbath day is the seventh day. They, they absolutely say that. So Yeshua kept the Sabbath, and throughout the Acts we find 83 observance of the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath was not abrogated anywhere in the whole scriptures. It was changed by the Catholic Church, and that can be easily proven by any heart that is truly seeking and wanting to follow Yahweh. You can prove it in five minutes of research on the Internet. Type it in. Type in the Catholic catechism and type in the Sabbath and you will see that they changed it. And sadly the Reformation failed because of the lack of returning to the Sabbath. As a matter of fact the the council of, I don't know if it was Trent or wherever it was that Martin Luther was uh, arguing for um, <clears throat> coming out of the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church probably would have changed if his, um, we don't know if they would have or not, but the vote in that council is going back to the scriptures, and there, the thing that swayed them not to follow Luther, not to make the change, not to hear him, was because Luther said, scripture alone, scripture alone, no tradition, and he, what did he do? But he kept the tradition of the church for the first day Sabbath, the first day of the week worship. And the council said, you know what? You had us. If you would have been going after the Sabbath, we would have kept it. We could have changed. But you prove you keep tradition over the scripture because you are still following our tradition of first day worship. End of story. It's... So be it. If you come to life, you come to life. If you don't, you don't. But the, it's being laid out here in this video. Okay, so the, the Sabbath, the seventh-day Sabbath, is definitely proven to still be in effect in the new and the old throughout. It has not been abrogated. It has not been done away with. Commandment number five. <clears throat> Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which Yahweh your Elohim giveth you. Okay, in Ephesians 6, starting in verse 1, Children, obey your parents in the Adonai, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment. Wait a minute. He just established that the commandments are still binding. 
because it's the first commandment with promise. Right there, it is absolutely established. Boom, stake in the ground. The commandments are still binding. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long upon the earth. He, he quoted it. And in Colossians 3.20, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Adonai. Fifth commandment, still binding. Sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. First John 3.15, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Okay. And then in Romans 13.9, you shall not kill. Same thing. Absolutely. We know we can't kill. And Yeshua told us, hey, you know what? You hate your brother without a cause. Just hate him. You're the same as a murderer. It's the same as killing him. So we know the spiritual side and the physical side are, are still there. In force. Never changed. The seventh command. You shall not commit adultery. In Matthew 5.24 I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Hmm. Wait a minute. Adultery is still a sin. Matthew 5.32, But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery. In Romans 13.9, For this you shall not commit adultery. Pretty well established that that command is binding upon us. The Eighth Commandment, Exodus 20.15, You shall not steal. Romans 13.9, You shall not steal. Um, I don't know. There's not, nothing more you can say about that. We know you shall not steal. That is absolutely binding upon us, right? The Ninth Commandment, <clears throat> you shall not bear witness against your neighbor. I'm sorry, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Romans 3.19, you shall not bear false witness. Can't do it. You lie against your neighbor, you've broken the commandment. Now, let me go a little deeper into bearing false witness. When you say, Yeshua is God, you have borne false witness. Because you have said something that Yeshua never said. You have said something that Scripture never said about Yeshua. You have borne false witness. You have killed your soul. You are going to die. You say there's a trinity. You're bearing false witness against Yahweh against Yeshua and against the power of Yahweh, the Spirit. It goes really, really, all this stuff goes really deep, the things that are going on in the world today. Modalism, you're bearing false witness. The Tenth Commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his maidservant, his his manservant or his maidservant or his ox or his ass or anything that is your neighbor's. And Romans 13.9, you shall not covet. Again, repeated, absolutely binding. We cannot be covetous. We must be content with what we have and praise Yahweh for it and be thankful. And just to reiterate again, these were the ten commandments of Yahweh that he spoke these words Yahweh spoke unto your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire of the cloud and the thick darkness and with a great voice and he added no more
And he wrote them on two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. Now in Exodus, well, we'll continue here. In Exodus 20, 18, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings <clears throat> and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear. But let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. What? And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for Elohim has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. Do we really fear our Creator enough to sin not? Do we fear him enough to keep his commandments? That's what this was all about. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near to the thick darkness where Elohim was. And Yahweh said unto Moses, This you shall say unto the children of Israel. You have seen that I have talked to you from heaven. And you shall not make of me God's Elohim of silver, neither shall you make unto you God's or Elohim of gold. Okay, so we can't form our own fashion of him in, in, in likenesses like this. And, and we can do it with our doctrine as we can do it with silver and gold. You can make these big gold crosses with them, hang on in different kind of garbage, folks. Don't do it. Now here's the key. This this is so, I want to stress this to everyone so hard because this is what it's really, what it comes down to in, in all things. An altar of earth you shall make unto me, okay? And yeah, we don't, Yeshua was our sacrifice. And, but we're going to read this in and shall sacrifice there on your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep, your, and your oxen. In all places that I record my name, <clears throat> will I come unto you, and I will bless you. Now he's coming unto our hearts, right? He's coming into our hearts. But here's the key I want to show you. An altar of earth you shall make unto me. <clears throat> this is no fancy, gold-trimmed, huge, great, big cathedral or anything like an altar of earth it is about as simple and down and low key as you possibly can get and then next is 25 and if you will make me an altar of stone okay so now you're going to build something up with your hands what's he says what does he say about it you shall not build it of hewn stone in other words, you don't change the stone. For if you lift up your tool upon it, you have polluted it. So it's he what we can do for him is nothing. We can do nothing for him, nothing of our hands, nothing that we do. The only thing we can do is give him an obedient heart and keep his commandments. That's all we can do. And he goes in verse 26, the last, Neither shall you go up by steps unto my altar, that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. What, is, what does this mean? Okay, look at what the... Look at what everybody is doing. They make a high altar. And they go up to this great high altar because they're trying to honor the idols and the other gods and everything. And he said, don't do it. In other words, it's an earth altar. It's stones right there in the ground. Boom. It's not high and lifted up. And then in Deuteronomy 4, 2, this, this is another key thing we need to understand. And Moses said, 
uh, you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish anything from it, that ye keep the commandments of Yahweh your God, which I have commanded you. We cannot add, we cannot remove. It is set, it is set in stone, and it's written. <clears throat> in Deuteronomy 4, 5, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh and he calls her my God, or my Elohim, commanded me that you should not do in the land whether you go to possess it. In Deuteronomy 4, 6, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We are the light to the nations, right? Isn't that what Yeshua told us to be? How can we be a light to the nations if we do not keep the commandments of Yahweh? How is that even possible? It is our wisdom and our understanding in the sights of the nation which shall hear of these statues and say, Surely this great nation is wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who has Elohim so near unto them as Yahweh our Elohim is in all things that we call upon him for? <clears throat> and what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I have set before you this day? Especially the day that you stood before Yahweh, your Elohim in Horeb, when Yahweh said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, <clears throat> that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And you... <clears throat> came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire in the midst of heaven with darkness, clouds, <clears throat> and thick darkness. And Yahweh spake unto you out of the midst of the fire, and you heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only you heard the voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And Yahweh commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land where, when you go to possess. Take you therefore good heed unto yourselves, for you saw no manner of similitude on the day of that Yahweh spoke unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure that in likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, and likeness of any winged thing that is in the air. And he goes on to say, and lest ye bow down to them. He says, don't make them first, lest ye bow down to them to worship them. And I probably should have put that in there, but read it for yourselves. Go to it. These commandments, all the statutes and judgments pointed to the Ten Commandments. Everything in the statutes and judgments had to do with the Ten Commandments. And <clears throat> they... Uh, they embellished upon all of them, unbalanced scale and and uh, treatment of animals, everything. It's all in there. And then James one twenty five, but whosoever looks at the perfect into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in all his deed. <clears throat> perfect law of liberty, the Ten Commandments. It's perfect. It is perfect. <clears throat> then in 2.8, if you fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. That's the royal law, you know. Love your God with all your soul, your heart, mind, 
love your neighbor as yourself. But if ye have respect of persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. <clears throat> For whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, ah, the perfect law of liberty, also said, do not kill, the perfect law of liberty, the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> now, if you commit adultery, if you commit not adultery, yet if you kill, you are become a transgressor of the law. So if you break one <clears throat> of the Ten Commandments, you've broken them all, you are dead. You're dead. You broke one, you're dead. And it doesn't matter how sweet and now how nice and how great you sing in church, how often you go to your <clears throat> Sunday church and Wednesday services and Good Friday services and all those things. doesn't make any difference. You're a transgressor, you're dead. And James goes on, so speak and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. The Ten Commandments, they will judge us. They will be what we are held to. <clears throat> Romans 13.8 Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And we find this. This is absolutely true. That is love. Our fulfilling of the law is the love for one another. <clears throat> for this, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this same naming that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And where do we find this? <clears throat> Where do we find the fulfilling of the Ten Commandments? How do we? How is love the fulfilling? In 1 John 5, 2, <clears throat> By this we know that we love the children of Yahweh, when we love Yahweh and keep His commandments. This is how we know. This is how we know. There's no other way to really know. <clears throat> For this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. If you will call the Sabbath a delight, does that make it grievous? Is it a grievous thing to not have any graven images? Is it a grievous thing to use his name Yahweh, and to reverence and lift it up on high? to do as he says, is it a grievance thing to um, honor your mother and father, to not kill, not commit adultery, not steal, not bear false witness, not covet? Are those things grievous? No. So we come back up here, the Ten Commandments, they are binding. This is the law. This is what is required of us, <clears throat> and we are required to do with all ten of them. We cannot change them. Not one jot or one tittle can be changed. You know, the very fact that anyone <clears throat> would come up forth and say, well, the Sabbath doesn't matter, you've put yourself ahead of Yeshua. You put yourself in front of it. You said, I am greater than Yeshua because I'm going to change the law. That's really what you're doing. You say the law doesn't matter. You're putting yourself above Yeshua. Yeshua said it's not going to change. Not one jot or one tittle is not going to pass. So may Yahweh bless his word. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments, enter them. If you have any questions, send them to me. And <clears throat> this will end Lesson 5, the Ten Commandments. I have Lesson 6 coming up. And it's talking about, um, it will be about the uh, Yahweh coming to Sinai. And 
and hopefully it'll be a blessing when I get it completed but <clears throat> I just pray to Yahweh our Father that he will bless his words in the hearts of all that would happen across this video and have heard it and I pray this in the name of Yeshua and I say don't believe me read your Bible folks read your Bibles until next time again may Yahweh bless his word <laughs>